Hello, hello, hello. What's all this, friend? Anybody out there yet? For Tunes Day? just yet. That is okay. We'll uh, set my handy dandy cellular phone to do not disturb here. Chris is here. Live now. <laughs> that's never that's never gonna get old to me anyway. Let's get rid of live now. Let's stop living now. <laughs> uh oh. Um, what's the last thing we're gonna do? Um, I've already tweeted a little bit about how we are live. I'm just gonna... What did I just do? Is everything still fine? Is everything still okay? Is everyone still alive? Okay, hold on. <laughs> you thought it was gonna be so easy. Um, I very, very scarily, um, <laughs> I, just, I bumped my keyboard on something and my uh, main monitor went dark. <laughs> There's always something. All right, that's back. That's back. That's front and center. Boy, howdy. Well, let's make ourselves visible, why don't we? Hello. Hello, hi, howdy. Welcome to, welcome to Tunes Day. Ah, uh, what I was doing was um, tweeting very helpfully about how we are live now. And how we are going to write some tunes. And we've got... Uh, a staff and everything. Ready to take our input. Ready to work for us. Ready to do what needs to be done. Maybe. Okay, good. We got this, we got this. Beautiful. That's a melody. It's also a scale.
This is where everybody says, ooh, ah. That's a melody, folks. No, oh, I guess this is I guess this is a good question, right? Is this a melody? Hmm. Hmm. Lawnmower's here. Welcome to the show. This is not only a uh, let's make up a melody stream, it's also let's figure out how our trial edition of Dorico works <laughs> stream. Uh, I um, am and have always been a Finale user. Um, and after a recent um, crash, I was like, yeah. Let's try out this. Let's try out this Dorico thing. Let's see what's going on with that. Um, I've hidden all the cool menus and and shit to keep it just to the um, uh, page score view. Um, but one thing that I think is actually uh, pretty key here. is that um, it doesn't lock me into a time signature. Um, this is more um, uh, akin to how I would write a melody on paper. Um, uh, very freely and then um, whatever, what, it, what feels correct for the expression of the melody and then inserting bar lines after the fact uh, to divvy it up. Um, and I'm very into that. Actually, I played this earlier, so now it's not a million years long bar. We can take it back to back to basics here. Um, I find I find that pretty compelling. I have literally no other comment on uh, features of Dorco because I've done basically nothing over here. We make it uh, alto clef. We can make, yeah, we can make a pianist read. This will be good. We can make a pianist read alto and tenor clef. Because <laughs> um, cause that, that won't get me kicked out of music immediately. Good lord. Was that same scale from earlier? Uh, but we're not he we're not here to play around. We I mean, we are here to play around, but we're also not music crime. Yeah, sort of. Um, this is going to be a kind of a free form stream, I expect. Um, just sort of noodling and doodling and working on whatever. Um, as such, I mean, as with, as with all the time, um, musical questions are always welcome. Um, cause otherwise, you know, what am I, what am I doing here? <laughs> if I'm not giving, if I'm not giving somebody some new information, like what's the, what's the entire point of me? Um, uh, but until any cool questions, uh, happen to come along, um, we're just going to try to write some melodies. And when I was thinking about this today, 
it occurred to me that um, no matter how intuitive it might become, um, sitting down and saying it's time to write a melody um, is kind of like um, asking someone funny to tell you a joke. You know what I mean? Um, it's in that same ballpark. Like the big, the big difference, I think, is that if you asked me to, on the spot, to sing you, to sing you a beautiful tune, like that's something that I could do as a, um, as a singer, as a lifelong musician, I can just draw upon my, uh, everything internalized that I have and, and do that. <clears throat> um, probably a little different than the tell me a joke scenario. Um, but I was interested in what's similar about those two situations. What's similar about that to, um, when I sit down and say, great time for me to write a melody. When I tell my, when I give my, when I put myself into that situation, uh, I've got, sorry, I've got a curious kitty behind the computer there. I've got to make sure he doesn't get into too much mischief. Are you a mischievous boy? Are you full of mischief? He's got dinner, so he's ready to do some mischief. Mwah. You're a good boy. Um, what is it about that, um, the pressure of the situation? And then the other thing I was thinking is like, okay, what, you know, what tools do I, do I draw upon when put into that um, situation of, of immediacy, of being asked to sing a song or write a tune. Um, and what are the tools of um, a comedian? Uh, I've been trying to learn a little bit more about the craft of uh, writing a joke recently. Um, and it's been a process that starts with um, you know, brain. But anyway, my process for for a couple so far has been like brainstorming. Like, what's a thing that I'm thinking or feeling about right now? It's usually um, really mundane. Um, like sitting on the bus takes a long time. Um, and uh, coming up with uh, a question to ask about that situation, and then answering that question over and over and over. Um, in different ways, trying to find more uh, and more surprising ways to answer that question each time. Trying to trying to hone in on, uh, trying to pinpoint um, concepts within that situation to uh, invert. Um, and that's been that's been an, an enlightening experience. And I wonder if there's something similar happening. Um, during the melody writing process that uh, maybe I've completely internalized, but we can draw out and talk about, or that we can deliberately tap into when thinking about writing melodies. That's a lot of talk uh, and very little um, sound making. Uh, so let's um, let's put some notes on paper. Uh, mistake number one <laughs> is um, this uh, uh, sheet in front of us saying piano. Um, uh, because really, like the first thing that we could we should consider when writing a melody. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. Is um, uh, 
what instrument or what voice is making this melody in the first place. You've never written music in your life, you can barely improvise. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe we'll come away with... Okay, actually, I'll tell you what. We'll, we'll start this off then with um, some techniques to just bare bones get you into uh, writing, writing a melody um, from a very functional standpoint. So the first thing we're going to do is plop in uh, some chords. I'm going to keep this very simple. Perfect. Sure. We'll do D minor. We'll take it up to B flat, maybe. Um, I like C minor next. Um, I like that. I'll do that. Um, and we'll take it back to C major. Okay, um, it's something. Um, we've got. A little bit of interest in the middle, um, but nothing too scary. And what we're gonna do, would, you, would I always lay down a chord progression first to get a bass going? No, definitely not. Um, uh, uh, right now, I would generally um, sing a melody, you know, pure, purely by itself, and then support it with harmony uh, after the fact. But I'm talking about this, like, don't let, let's not underestimate this. Um, method for reasons which will hopefully become apparent really, really quickly, um, for giving yourself a, a framework to think about writing melodies, um, to get to, to write, to write a melody that, that makes sense, that feels like it functions, that feels like it's, that it's telling you something, that it's going on some sort of journey. Um, uh, Looking at this, having having this sort of structure underneath it first is going to assist you uh, in that regard. Um, so this this lesson is is for you specifically, Krista. So pay attention. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. You can pay as much or as, or as little attention as you like. But this is a good starting point, I suppose, um, for anyone um, uh, not as confident in their uh, uh, straight off the dome melody making, um, uh, or anybody that, um, uh, just likes having a tool in their toolbox to work with. Uh, so what I'm, <clears throat> what I'm talking about here is that now we've, if we've laid down a chord progression that we think makes some sense to us, Little, I like this little C minor twist because it like B flat and C minor live in the same zone, but we started on C major, right? So it's a little like, ooh, where are we? This is the secondary dominant of D minor, and this is two five one taking us back to C major. Uh, simple, but it's got some interest to it. Okay. Uh, each of the, we're, we're going to think of these as, um, these are our, our waypoints. I've made each of them four beats long for no particular reason. And at each of these moments, um, we have a number of tones that, you know, if you're, if you're scared of writing a tune, uh, for these, you, for these four beats, right, we have some notes that are guaranteed safe, and that is all the notes that are in the chord, 
right? <laughs> so. That might not be uh, uh, the most intriguing melody in the world, but um, uh, it you know it went up and down. Uh, it uh, uh, lined up with these harmonic waypoints quite nicely because I was literally only using chord tones at any given moment. Um, very 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 safe. Um, totally functional totally uh totally doable if, you're, if you were and if you were in a, this is actually a decent exercise um uh for um improvising as well because i think because i think if you if you can't make an interesting melody out of only the chord tones Um, then you still then you need to develop your sense of of line, develop a sense uh, of uh, where where melody is going. What did I do here? I went up and I went up and back down. And then I ended with this nice little leap, hopeful leap. Uh, straight off the straight off the dome, only using chord to, chord tones. Um, so the next, uh, Krista, feel free to say that this is making sense or not making sense as as we go. By the way, another level uh, again uh, tying ourselves to this framework because this is. Um, uh, you know, four beats to every single chord. Um, and our melody was using entirely chord tones that whole time, never straying outside. There's another one, only chord and tones. A little bit of, little paused a little bit every now and then. Um, right side, so we had some rhythmic variation there. Instead of just playing on every beat, um, I introduced some some mom some, you know, slight phrasing. Uh, I found places to rest and then and then continue. Perfectly fine. Okay, now what's going on here? We've introduced this C in our melody, which is not a chord tone of D minor. J'accuse! What's going on here? Why does it work? Does it feel like it works? Um... We, I don't want to be too dogmatic about this. This is a bit of an oversimplification, but saying that we're in four four here, um, we have a sense in four four time of strong beats and weak beats, and the strong beats are one and three. Weak beats are two and four. So what's happening here is I'm playing a chord tone, the D, on the first strong beat, a non-chord tone on the weak beat, 
and returning to a chord tone on the strong beat. Now I'm just, you know, going haywire. Um, Let's try and stick to just that as an as an exercise. So I have the I have the option to use only the chord tones, or I have the option to use non chord tones on weak beats, um, and uh, we'll see where this takes us. So we got. Tell me everything. Stream chat. Again, these are not the rules of melody. Um, these are very, very helpful uh, guidelines and um, scaffolding uh, to help you uh, write if you are unfamiliar or or just just want to get into it. These are good tools. When I first started writing seriously um, uh, in high school, you know, <laughs> before <laughs> going off to music school, um, uh, this method of having a having a harmony in mind as the waypoint and thinking strongly about the melody either playing a tone that is in the chord or not in the chord, um, like that, you know, carried me through um, most of my very, very early uh, experiments. Um, absolutely valid. Coming from a jazz perspective, I feel like you could put almost any note with almost any chord if you play it with confidence. That is both true and untrue. Um... Any, okay, so if you play C sharp on top of this D minor triad, for example, um, I mean, this is recognized in jazz theory as a D minor major seven, right? It's also, it's also recognized that, um, uh, this object has a tendency and that this C sharp is to be used in uh, uh, certain ways that are satisfying. Um, and if it's not used in this way, if it's used, if it's used in um, uh, an unsatisfying way, well, that, that speaks for itself, right? Um, just playing it with confidence is not enough. Uh, you have to play it with um, knowledge and intention. Um, this C sharp in closing the D, for example, mwah, chef's gifts, right? This C sharp, um, I'm trying to think of a way to use it that's uh, not satisfying. Oh, I, I mean, we're still making a melody up here, honestly, that lands on the F, right? So that felt satisfying. I almost can't do, <laughs> I almost can't do it. <laughs> um, you didn't necessarily mean willy-nilly. Okay, fair. Uh, a little bit outside the point of what I'm trying to tell you at this point in time. Um, Right? 
right? Here we here we've got a a non-chord tone on the strong beat, the clashing tone even, uh, with a resolution on the weak beat. This is a Mozartism. It's also a bluesism. <laughs> right. Um, uh, so these, these, it's a lot like, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot like poetic meter in that sense, right? Um, uh, you can make your line very, very strict according to iambic pentameter, and you can also, uh, play around within the meter, um, and, uh, uh, you know, where you are placing chord tones and non-chord tones in your melody, um, where you're resolving, uh, very much similar. You should build up an understanding of how the meter works naturally before um, you attempt such things. But um, once you build enough familiarity with, you know, strong and weak um, uh, you will uh, have the confidence to um, experiment any questions yet I want to get in I want to get into actually writing something No questions so far. That's either a good sign or a bad sign. <laughs> I feel like. Um, I don't know. I almost I almost feel like no questions means I haven't said anything interesting enough to ask about. Um, but that's just me getting up in my own head. Um, okay, let's get let's get rid of these. I shared. Let's get rid of these. Too well, you have no input. Oh. Okay, so if you um, if you're building up, if you're just building up your confidence, um, uh, or are inexperienced or, um, I mean, just want to give yourself a little, a little structure, um, a little help as it were, uh, starting from an underlying um, chord structure and uh, planting a melody on top of it is a perfectly reasonable way to go. Um, and I often, uh, I mean, um, that's how um, I think about uh, improvising, certainly. Right, I think about what my harmony is in that moment, and then I imagine you know, some sort of something to go on top of it. for me a little bit there. Um, 
and that's possibly a disadvantage of uh, um, um, harmony-focused thinking when when improvising is that um, uh, the shape of the melody ends up. I like I tend to end up, as you heard at the end there, um, uh, getting into these um, uh, big sequences where I just, you know, I build up, I build up a ton of momentum in one direction. Um, uh, like that chromatic ascent we heard at the end, like whatever I was doing. Um, anyway. Maybe I should bring those chords back. I felt like they were useful for half a second. Questions. Questions and questions and answers. You hear or I guess you read <laughs> um theorists, writers, whoever, um talk about melodies as having questions and answers a lot. Let's think about what a question and an answer means. Um, and let's actually input some notes. Why don't we? By Jove. And just slap in a quarter rest like that. Sure. Great. Off to a great start. So, maybe not a terribly interesting question, but I feel like this is an example of a question that a melody might ask. We, there is a sense that something is meant to follow this. Uh, it does not feel... Um, self-contained. Do you get that sense? Incomplete. So in talking about questions and answers, we were thinking about something that completes this um, uh, in some sort of satisfying way. Um, one way, and here's where, like, here's where, here's where composing just gets off the rails, right? Because we can answer this question. You know, this gets go back to what we were talking about with jokes, actually. Um, we can answer this question, uh, a lot of different ways. Okay. Um, and remember back when we were talking about form, a couple, well, I guess last Theory Thursday, because we skipped one, um, we talked about the tools of repetition and contrast uh, going into our, our toolbox. Um, let's bring those to bear here when thinking about how we want to answer this very simple question. Um, one way we can respond to this question is... Can I press R for rest? 
No, I cannot. R is for repeat. I can toggle the rest and then insert rest. Okay, so this is one way of answering this question. Sort of. It still feels a little bit unresolved. Um, what's happened here? Uh, we've repeated this A rhythmic idea. It's the same rhythm. Ya da 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 da. Ya da 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 da. And we've repeated this idea of going up five steps in order, right? The only contrast here is where, where we started and ended. We've outlined this, and then we outlined this. Okay. Uh, we can do better, I'm sure. I'm sure. Is this a place to start? No. Yoink. That's a place to start. Still figuring out Dorico. We'll get there. Okay, what's another way we can we can answer this question? La da 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 da. Ba da 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 da. And put in a rest. There. Uh, what's happening here? Got to get back to home is a uh, a great way of thinking about it. Yes. Um, you can also think about, of course, making a brand new home. Uh, maybe we'll maybe we'll try maybe we'll try that answer in a sec. Uh, now this is where we could start to get into like really um, some higher level uh, Shankarian stuff. Um, uh, Shankar is all about saying um, everything that happens in between is all well and good. But the basic shape of this melody is C and then D, <laughs> right? It goes, it goes up, and then it lands back here, maybe. But the, the like the er shape, the simplest version of this, like if you were to, if this were a picture that you were, you know, pixelating step by step by step until it was two pixels, <laughs> those two pixels would be C and then D. We started here. Da -da 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 -da, and then we landed here. A um, little bit of a bonus for you there. And that's one way in which, while this feels like an answer to the question, it does not feel 100% um, complete. Right? Do you get that sense? stuff uh, another day okay good talk so uh, what else um, uh, we repeated our rhythmic idea which is a nice way of, of you know unifying these two chunks um, we've made our our direction different right it's not just a straight line we made it wiggly <laughs> and we made it wiggly uh, going down uh, we've retraced some of our some of the distance that we've traveled. We went up here and then we covered it again in a wiggly way. Um, so these these ideas are uh, uh, linked by their rhythmic um, uh, repetition.
and there's uh, but they have different um, uh, different directions, different shapes, um, and they have different um, tones that they aim toward. Right. If we look at this first phrase, we've got this distance outlined. If we look at the second phrase, we're looking at this. When we start to talk about implied harmony, um, you know, you look at every other note of this first thing, thinking about strong and weak beats, right? We've sort of outlined a C major triad first, and then we've outlined this interval uh, second. This interval, of course, is part of a number of different harmonies, right? We could, do, yeah, we could do this. So we could, we've, let's assume we're starting on C major. All of a sudden, this simple answer to the question has got a lot more interesting, right? Um, other triads, other chords that contain this interval that our second melody is, or the, the, that our second half is outlining, um, we can make it part of this uh, B flat dominant. That's fun. Um, and this is actually retaining some of the uh, diminished quality, right? Just happens to have this B flat in the bass. But it also kind of feels like the, um, uh, you know, minor four. With the added D. So that's a, you know, minor four, six chord. That contains this interval, or the D half diminished, if you will. Uh, this is very, um, very, I'm uh, very romantic. Uh, very John Williams. Um, really nice stuff. We could, where, where would we resolve that? I guess. I mean, in some ways, wherever we want, because um, a diminished triad is a is a portal to many different worlds. Um, but this is a this is a melody talk, not a <laughs> harmony talk. Um, another not interesting way to answer it is just with a straight up dominant seventh. Right, that's fine. Um, how to find these possibilities, too, um, I started thinking about it by saying, like, okay, let's look for this interval in an, in whatever chords. A more advanced chord this appears in would be, uh, like a D flat, uh, dominant seventh, flat nine. Very different approach. Um, how can you go about finding some of these? Is thinking about these guide tones, these these um, target tones, um, just going through like uh, thinking about what the what the what function they are in a triad. So this could be a root and a third. In D minor, uh, this could be the third. Like we're just going up in complexity. This could be the third and the fifth, and that, of course, is B flat major. This could be the fifth and the minor seventh, and that is, of course, part of the G dominant or the uh, minor, which we liked a lot, right? Because this color tone in the melody is is super fun. This could be the seventh and the ninth. 
which could be the uh, seventh and flat ninth of E dominant seven. Stuff happening there. Um, and so on and so forth. Obviously, there are even more possibilities. Uh, let's answer this question in in a new way. Okay, so we've answered it by sort of repeating the same the same shape, going to a different place. Now we've um, answered it uh, going down and having a different shape, um, but with the same rhythm. Let's try to now answer this question. Yeah, let's make sure we've got it rhythmically. Sure. Uh, let's try to answer this question by changing the rhythm also. So we started with um, um, uh, the easiest way to create some contrast is say, okay, we've got um, motion that started the first phrase. So we're going to start the second phrase with a help note instead. Right? Um, note that uh, this actually, I'm using some of, this, the, some of the same um, uh, notes as the answer we just did. Um, so we're not changing it too much at once. So we've got... Um, bum. And I tie to that. Hi. Sure, that works. Um, if we were in a meter, uh, we wouldn't write it like this. Um, basically, I've outlined the exact same interval as we just did in the other one. So we could, you know, put the same harmony underneath it. No. Um, uh, let's put this in a uh, time signature so that we know. Whoops. <laughs> uh, time signature. Boop. Ah, oh, okay. This is why Dorico is really powerful because um, it stores all of these notes as, not as, you know, a dotted quarter uh, and so on and so forth, but as, as durations. And then when we put a meter on them, it's able to rewrite them and rebeam them appropriately for the meter. Um, and I am, I am super duper into that. Um, okay, so this is, um, uh, makes more clear the melodic idea that we were we were thinking about. Um la da 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 ba da yi da da uh so again still sort of outlining this big interval that we just discovered with our previous answer. Um, uh, but we've created rhythmic variation. It's the same number of notes. It's still five notes. One, two, one, two, three, four, five. Um, uh, instead of ending on the strong beat three, one, two, three, um, uh, we've, uh, we've used the strong beat to sort of, um, propel us off of this F. Uh, and then and decay off of it with this scene. Ba da dum idea. Uh. And this feels like it should go on. Right, so, so, you know, something like that. Um, 
And if I were to continue this right now, what I would do um, after inserting a few bars <clears throat> is uh, subvert expectations. So what I just sang, um, it is a perfectly sensible place for this melody to resolve to is the E. Right? It, make, it makes total sense. Um, one of the reasons it makes sense is, um, uh, you know, you learn about this in when studying Renaissance counterpoint, is after this big, after this you know, big, after this leap of the fourth, um, uh, the most, one of the most natural reactions is to um, uh, go back and fill that leap in. Um, and in, in like strict Renaissance rules, um, you can't do another leap until you've filled that distance in. Um, and I, I always like having those rules. Okay, so what am I going to do to make this a, a little bit of a surprise? I'm gonna throw it. I'm gonna resolve to the E flat instead. Ob obviously, obviously, um, there was no. <laughs> it was almost like to me. It, it feels like it was almost a foregone conclusion um, that I'm gonna go to the E flat instead. Uh, um. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna use some of this momentum that we've built um, and okay returning to question and answer time um, <clears throat> and rep repetition and contrast uh, we've established a big moment of contrast by defying expectations of where this melody might resolve um, this is a great opportunity to um, bring back the uh, rhythmic material that we started with um, uh, to, you know, re-familiarize the ear with what's going on here. So we had we started with a ya da 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 da, and now in this weird new place, we can do another ya da 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 da. Uh, not necessarily the exact same shape, although that is an option. That is available to us. I'm not going to do it because I don't find that uh, terribly interesting. But you could, right? Um, this is valid. We just we just take take the chunk that we just did, and then we sort of rep we're sort of copy pasting it in a new key area in E flat instead. Right? Um, what would it be? It would be that. The minor five of E flat. Um, and this is, a, this is, don't get me wrong, just because I personally don't find going up the scale like this terribly interesting doesn't make this already um, uh, uh, a melody that is, for one thing, you know, unbound by the, the, the tyranny of believing it has to exist in a single, um, key area, right? Thinking that this has to be in, the whole thing has to be in all the notes of C major, right? Uh, we're, we're, we're evolving beyond it. We can go. We can go back there if we want to, but uh, we can go on an on an adventure too. Um, and uh, uh, melodies 
I think melodies should be um, absolutely 100% free um, to do whatever they need to do intervallically with their with their intervallic language and we will create harmonies to support their journey afterward um, okay so this is one this is one new direction we could go um, we like the E flat uh, for reasons already stated What's going on with this E flat? Where should it go? We know that we want to start with some of the same rhythmic material of this running thing. We could contrast it with the opening by going down after this. Um, all right, we can do that. In, you know, four beats to the bar, the four bar phrase is is so ridiculously common. Um, we can think of this second half as, you know, creating a new small question uh, to then answer. Um, anybody out there, where do, where do they want, where do they want to go with this E flat? What do they want to do with it? What do you, the viewer, want to, want to, want to go with this uh, E flat? E flat. In the meantime, I'll toss a key signature on. Oops, not there. Let's put it up front. Because we're in 4 4, why not? And then we can delete it from there. Beautiful. Um, I can create all sorts of weird times over, over there. Can I just straight up delete this bar? This bar line? Yes, I can. <laughs> yeah, I mean, this is this is um, not a purely analytical question. Of course, right? We were using some analytical tools to just build this example um, to get going. Um, but this is an emotional question, right? Melodies uh, communicate things. What do we what do we want to communicate? what um, what do we want to express with what we are about to write? That will give us something to aim for with the um, tonal, language that we use um we can continue this you know uh purely scientifically um but um uh when in doubt right we can we can ask ourselves what we feel like should happen what we want to happen um and as, a, as an improviser, right, I could just, I might just uh, uh, sing through this or play through this uh, a million times and make up a, bit of a million different endings until I find something I like. I feel like it should intensify slightly at this point. Cool. Love it. Um, Um, okay, if, if so, if I were using my tool of strict Renaissance uh, cantus humus rules, um, I've leapt uh, from G to D, I've used an E flat, I still have to fill in the leap completely before I can do another leap. Um, so that, so let's just say that our next note is going to be the F. Um, and the thing that, so if, if we want, if we want to intensify things, um, uh, we're going to, I, I, I'm saying all this to justify something I've already decided to do. Um, 
uh, we think of intensity as if we have a knob that we turn from um, you know everything everything this everything similar to everything changing um, the similar face option <laughs> if you will um, we can ramp up the the intensity by um, creating uh, surprise after surprise after surprise Co ramping up the, the the amount of contrast density uh, that we that we toss into this thing uh, so we've already had one surprise of the E flat let's do another surprise right away to uh, 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 ramp up the intensity there are a couple things we could do, right? One thing we could do is do a big leap immediately after this one. That would be somewhat surprising. The first thing to think about when asking what would be surprising is what do we expect to happen? I expect... I expect to land on the G. Um, and so... Uh, uh, it would certainly be surprising if we heard... This is that that creates interest. This big leap. Um, uh, if you want, um, uh, if we want intensity that is also, you know, gnarly. <laughs> um, the thing that I think about doing immediately is. <laughs> Isn't that G flat? Uh, outlining this uh, minor third interval because minor thirds are uh, the best and very cool. And the contrast between and this um, after it is uh, is pretty intense. So we could do. Or whatever. Um, if we wanted to make that slightly less intense, we could still use our leap idea and do right. Um. This E flat, F, B flat, we sort of, we know how this works. And harmony will tell us more about how this works, but we know that these exist as part of C minor. Which of course has the G in it. Uh, so delaying the, the, the revelation that this is not E flat major, but E flat minor uh, is also interesting. It is, I think it's uh, uh, slightly less, it's slightly less intense talking about that, um, that contrast density idea that I was just mentioning, right? It's denser to have that surprise right up front. <laughs> Um, uh, by giving it a little more, like, this is a softer surprise. And now we've, you know, introduced, uh, uh, this resolution. It's predicted quite a bit, I think. We've, we've, because we're approaching it stepwise from two directions. This way. And... And so this is basically a big ol' Hey guys, I'm going here. Even if that destination does end up being, you know, this um, unpredicted G flat note, the 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 where we are going is very very much predicted by the shape around it. Is anybody following me? <laughs> 
I'm getting no feedback from from the chat, and so I worry that I'm just rambling. Okay, you get it. Great. Um, so while that's another option available to us, um, uh, if we want to ramp up the intensity a lot at this point, let's have that G-flat um, uh, right up front, and we'll also ramp up the rhythmic intensity, I think. Um, let's put the this, oops, that's the wrong note. We'll put that there. And what I'm thinking of happening next is this. So here we've had um, our phrases have been the whole bar long, basically. La da 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 da. Whole bar idea. Ya da 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 da. Whole bar idea. La da. Or, la da da. Uh, what I want here is to now have. Uh, uh, we're going to contrast this by having shorter ideas, shorter phrases all of a sudden as well. So you got right? Right? You can hear what I'm going for. Um, Mm -hmm. Of course, as soon as I, as soon as I, you know, sing this, I'm like, okay, great. That's the expectation. Now, harmonically, melodically, right, using our tone language, how are we going to break away from the expectation of the right? Um, Okay, what we're gonna, what we're gonna do is, um, we are gonna repeat this. It's gonna be an A natural. So, what's happening, what's happening here? Um, we might expect, this, but we're doing, and this in itself is a repetition of this intervallic idea. We are outlining this minor third. Um, I call this the the minor trichord, right? Because it sounds like it belongs in a. It's three notes. It belong. They belong. They predict this uh, F-sharp minor triad without even using the fifth. Uh, this way of outlining the minor third does not predict F-sharp minor. Right? It's different. But this whole step, then half step, uh, I call the minor trichord. Anyway, so we're repeating it. Um... Um, so we're creating the expectation of short phrases, um, but in, but no, we're actually landing on this, um, uh, a natural. And we're waiting on it for an extra beat. Can we just dot it? Yes, we can. Whoops, didn't want to do that. Uh, 
Come on now. Let let me there we go. Nope. E natural, and we want that, and that E is the downbeat in my mind. So we're going to come back here, and we say one, two, three, four, five. That's a six beat bar. And I would love for this not to be. I would love for this to be a tied to an eighth rather than a dotted quarter. I'm gonna make these both threes, I guess. So, because because I, I, this is closer to what I was going for in the first place, I would say. Oops, that belongs. Uh, I didn't mean to make that an A sharp. I wanted that to be changed enharmonically into a G sharp, because G sharp uh, leads to A. There we go. Uh, excuse me? I need I do need that sharp to show up though. It's rather important. Thank you. Uh, because we're transitioning from this flat zone, very clear E flat minor flat zone because we're coming from C. Going here. Well, that's the that's the you know implied harmony of this uh, melody. How can I make this look better? <laughs> is the real question. I guess we could do this. This is fine. We'll figure that out later, Dorico. Um. Okay. Because so. Let's go back and talk about how I'm thinking of this as creating more intensity, 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 intensity. So, uh, first, E flat instead of E natural, right? Then we have this contrast density. Oh God, no, we can't write this as G flat to, um, to G sharp. That's a faux pas if ever I've seen one. We would have to, we would have to, yeah, it has, it has to be an A-flat. It has to be. Uh, intervallically. Oops. Come on, nail. Flat. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not ideal, but um, uh, the the shape of the melody on paper has to match what it sounds like. We can't just have we can't just put G flat and then G sharp, um, because that's a, that's on paper that's a double augmented unison, right? It's two note heads on the same line that are different notes. It's uh, confusing to the reader. It's not allowed. Um, so this has to be written as an A-flat, even though we're going to a natural. This is survivable. This is what happens when you write um, music without a key center. Uh, you have to be really solid in how you spell things. Anyway, talking about intensity. Uh, uh, we're changing the intensity with the length of phrase. So we have these bar long phrases. Now all of a sudden short phrases. Um, we were expecting them to continue short, but we landed on this long A natural. Um, uh, for, for a beat two, and then I just sort of, you know, continued up where I thought it would be fun. Um, 
and then we've also introduced the this uh, uh, this real sense of time changing as well as another form of intensity to this moment. So one. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, right? Uh, uh, time has um, uh, compressed a little bit, and that's adding to this, you know, intense, uh, breathless character just as much as making these phrases much shorter all of a sudden. Anybody like that? Anybody, anybody have any thoughts? Everybody following? Krista says, yeah. Harmonizing this is another story, right? The most difficult part, I think, is this change right here. I'm sure you have many intelligent thoughts, Krista. Learning, learning... I, I'll say this, learning how to talk about music, learning how to articulate what it is about what you hear that causes you to feel X way, like that, that takes time and practice. It takes a while to figure out. It's a weird process. Um, you can start simply by saying, oh, this feels exciting or oh great this feels like i've you know climbed to the top of this mountain and i can see the landscape right or whatever um and then connecting that to what the melody is doing on paper that contributes to those feelings is a different skill um uh just like um because I've I, I'm learning how to taste whiskey. <laughs> I've been to a couple whiskey uh, tastings um, in the last you know three years. Like I don't do it all the time. I've done two in the last in the last few years, um, and um, there's a huge amount of just you know having having thoughts about this experience and having no idea what in the drink in the physicality of it is contributing to that um, but the experience is still valid if it's doing that for me it's that's what it's doing um right knowing knowing that it's the vanilla and cinnamon that's giving me the sense of library like to connecting those two things is a totally different um much more advanced i would say um skill set and not one that is required to talk about your personal experience not one that is required to enjoy the experience so there i'm sure you have plenty of intelligent thoughts let's listen to what we've created I'm the sort of person I'm 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 a very sad uh person. And uh what that means for me in this moment is that we're not going to allow this moment of happiness on E major to last. Right. We're going to come back down immediately. That's not E major. That's C sharp minor. Fools. <laughs> 
How do we feel about this? Let's make this, um, oops, not there. Let's, let's just make that, let's shorten it even further. Let's make that a two. Um, and we'll put a, um, put a breath mark in like right away. Yeah. So we know not to linger on this C sharp either. So we go, um, La da 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 and get and breathe immediately getting uh getting ready for what comes after, right? We're not lingering. Ba da da Anybody have any thoughts or questions or comments or feelings? Or um, dreams, hopes and dreams. <laughs> but your house weren't so hot so you could focus properly on this. Well, Say lovey. <laughs> um, and all this, mind you, um, very like this bit. At, this bit at the end was just me writing down what I sang in the moment. Um, but the majority of this, as an exercise with with you all. Um, was arrived at in a very, you know, um, uh, scientific, uh, testing things manner, right? We went through in the second bar, a couple of, uh, possible answers to this extremely simple proposed question. Um, uh, until we landed on this, you know, idea that introduced the most, um uh the most contrast we we used what we knew about um where this was going to tell us what to do next we decided that we wanted to um uh ramp something up intensely and we used all of the tools that were available to us to ramp up that intensity with um uh you know these these uh surprise tones with shortening of phrases with the compressing of time brought all of these different things to bear on that moment you like the methodical approach instead of just write what you feel because you can't get started with that approach yeah totally totally um and um you know i i will advocate for an approach like what we just did especially when it comes to inventing um uh alternate resolutions like we did with this e flat uh because uh we would not have written this melody if we started with uh, a harmonic progression in C major, for example, right? If we if we decided from the outset that we were going to do this, or even even the thing we had at the beginning, right? Um, we would never have written a melody that goes to the places this one does, because um, this melody using again our methodical analytical tools um, we have figured out exactly where it needs to go and um, uh, 
we will support it harmonically in that journey after the fact. Um, I, I will advocate for that uh, any day of the week. See, if we just put the, now if we just put the E flat minor here, that gives away the G flat immediately, right? So we could make it C minor, which does not give away the trick, right? Um, and it's like, and it's nice saying like, okay, we've done uh, this, and then we went to this minor five, and this and C minor are in the same key, right? Minor five, minor one, those are both C minor. So this makes sense, and that makes our G flat even more surprising. We have to be careful what chord we put here, because we're going to this. And this is the part where I might, uh, you know, working on paper, um, I would start to pencil in stuff. Well, actually, hold on. I mean, what's, what's the point of this if I'm not going to put stuff in here? Uh, let's use my, can I put on my chord tool? Um, oh, that's not, that's not right. I want it to be, I want it to say F sharp minor, but instead it says F box minor. <laughs> oh, dang. I'll just write it out. Oops. I keep you, oh no. Press F in the chat. Oh yeah, if I do space, okay. That's what's happening. Spacebar advances it to the next uh, moment. And that's not what we don't want to do. Can I, what's the cool people way to do this? Can I just write sharp? <laughs> no. FSM? No. All right, we'll figure that out later. We'll do it as a, I'll do it as a text uh, note. Then, again, brain to Dorico. Perfect. Yeah. God, that sucks, but great. So like, we'll make a little note to ourselves that right F sharp minor belongs here. Um. Uh. Same thing here, we can make a little note to self that um, C minor belongs over here. Or, and we have to figure out what goes here. We have to get from here to here. And now we've, you know, introduced in our compositional progress pro process, you know, this is a harmony puzzle. This is a this is a voice leading puzzle. How do we get from here to here in uh one, two, three beats? We have if we're doing a chord on every beat, we have two waypoints to get to F sharp minor. Uh, when we are, actually, hang on, I mean, why don't we, why don't we just plug them in here? The power of Dorico. <laughs> we don't know what that one is. Uh, we know that this one is F sharp minor. Um, they're in root position, which we can play with later. Uh, but we can, you know, slot these in and now we're doing something. Um, I find a great technique, this is going, you know, off script as far as, uh, just plain melodies are concerned, but we're here, so why not? Um, uh, a, a fantastic technique for figuring out how to get from point A to B is to write it backwards. 
So like what's what's a compelling thing to have right before this F sharp minor is how we want to think about it. What are what's gonna happen immediately before that that's cool and exciting that we feel good about? Um, and we'll just keep working backwards, writing interesting ways to get places until we've filled in the gap. So if we want this, right, what's a fun chord to have right before it? I mean, uh, I like having, and this is where our voice leading tools come in, like this is all these things we've talked about before, excuse me. If we have three voices, we want to think about what each voice is doing. I really like the idea of this, you know, alto, let's say, voice moving from D down to the C sharp. To do this, right? That's a really nice motion. Um, so actually, why don't we just, why don't we pencil that in to start with? So now we've got Okay, if we're thinking in terms of three voices moving three places, right? We've done one of them. Now we just have to figure out how to get these two voices here in a fun way. This is just repeating what the melody is doing. So let's not do that. This is kind of interesting. Or sorry. It should be this. Okay, it's a little bit less interesting. This is fun. That's drama, baby. This chromatic descent. Contrary motion with the melody, of course. The melody is going up. These two voices are sinking down. Let's, let's toss that in there, because that's that just sounds cool. If it sounds cool... It sounds cool. Like, we think about all these theory questions and concerns, but at the end of the day, it needs to sound cool. Okay, so we've got this. What's this lower voice going to do? It has to get to the F sharp. We don't want it to be moving down along with the other voices. We want to create some interest, right? This is kind of wacky, right? A straight up B flat major. Um, this is, of course, totally legal in my opinion, from a voice leading perspective. Um, this is one, this is one of these things where I just call it kind of like the, the squeeze in. See how, see how all these voices are sort of squeezing together? And by contrast, you know, the expansion, right, is the opposite. Um, it... It creates a really tense moment here with the melody. And one that obscures the fact that we're going to F-sharp minor in the first place, right? Because you look at this and you think, that's not F-sharp minor. You hear this and you're like, oh, that's B-flat dominant seventh. That's going to here, right? Or, or, uh, sorry this, right? So this is cool if you can justify it. Um, what else do we have? This is just a... This isn't as exciting to me, almost, because it's, this is just saying... Um, uh, ooh, look, here's a weird chord. We're going somewhere weird, right? That doesn't make the F-sharp minor as surprising to me as this. We have, to, we have to justify this clashing F natural 
Um, but I do kind of like this approach as a moment, especially if we're limiting ourselves to only these three voices. So let's bonk that in there. Bam. Now, do you see, do you see what we've done for ourselves, right? Before, we had a harmonic puzzle of how do I get from here, C sharp, or C minor, to here, F sharp minor. Now, we've created the much easier puzzle of how do we get from here to here. Oops, that's nothing. Get out of here. Uh, the only trick to this is our melody uses that G flat. So we have to we have to get the G flat to land in something, uh, which I was already thinking about with this sort of D major thing. Right, that's something. But I mean, this is the sort of thing that um, you could um, uh, uh, you could mess with for you know two hours or so. Um, until you figure out exactly what you want to happen and why, um, and maybe it'll maybe to solve this little puzzle, it's going to involve you know some inner voices moving in a some sort of way, blah 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 blah. Um, but um, uh, I think that's uh, coming up on about as much time as I want to spend with <laughs> with this this evening. We got to we got somewhere eventually. Um, I was thinking we were going to, like, write, you know, five or ten or whatever, but um, we just sort of went went all in on this guy. Chris says, you got to do sleep, but you really didn't learn a lot. That's great. I'm glad. Um, hopefully uh, uh, anybody out there watching has learned a thing or two about um, different ways you can think about uh developing a melody producing a melody crafting a melody chopin did you learn something chopin yeah he liked it um any final thoughts from anyone before uh I call it and get to my to my evening. Any final questions? Comments, concerns, tomatoes. Your final thought is have a good night. Thanks, Krista. I feel okay. I still don't know what we're going to cover for Theory Thursday. <laughs> we'll brainstorm. Yeah, we'll do, we'll do something. Uh... Well, if nobody if nobody out there has anything else, uh, we'll just go ahead and play you out. <laughs> Kicking in. Good night, Krista. Thanks for being here.
And everybody, see you next time. Write a melody. Write something cool.